when life gives you lemons and the lemonade turns sour. What up you guys and welcome back to my channel Ellen Rees or if you are new here Welcome to this very messy channel. My name is Will and today I want to talk to you about some disappointing reads that I read in 2020. We all know that 2020 has been that year for the majority of us. And there have just been some reads that just didn't make the cut. <laughs> Of course, this is all just my personal opinion. The first book that I want to talk to you about is Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera. Firstly, I do want to say that I have enjoyed Adam Silvera's books in the past. I first read They Both Die at the End, spoiler, and then I moved on to More Happy Than Not and History Is All That You Left Me, and I thoroughly enjoyed all three of those books. Infinity Sun is Adam Silvera's first contemporary fantasy and it just did not land where I would have liked it to. Infinity Sun is basically about two brothers, Emel and Brighton, living in New York City, who both idolize a vigilante group known as the Spellwalkers. Spellwalkers are a group of super powered individuals who are born with powers and there is an opposing group known as the Spectres who take said powers. Brighton is one of the brothers who wishes that he had a power of his own. Emel just wants the fighting to stop. However, the brother's relationship is soon tested as Emel is the one who suddenly wakes up one day with a power of his own. It was an interesting premise. I believe that Infinity Sun was basically a novel where Adam was potentially trying to set up his new contemporary fantasy world. However, I left a two-star review on Goodreads because the entirety of the novel only felt like a second draft. The relationship with the brothers or the personalities with the brothers, I honestly could not resonate or feel for, especially Brighton. Brighton is a selfish character who only cared about the amount of views that he could get on YouTube. If I can remember correctly, I actually think that Brighton actually tries to use his brother and his newly found powers as a way to gain views as well. And it just puts such a strenuous relationship upon the brothers, especially towards the end. It was just the novel that really did not sit right with me whatsoever. I don't know. Back in 2018, I read the novel Carry On by Rainbow Wow. And this year, I read Wayward Son, the sequel to Carry On. Carry On first dealt with Simon Snow, who is a magically gifted chosen one. In his last year at Watford School of Magics, he deals with his mentor avoiding him, his girlfriend broke up with him, and he is pretty sure that his roommate, who is a vampire that goes by the name of Baz, is pure evil. However, Baz is missing. Throughout the entire novel, Simon Snow basically goes around school trying to figure out who is this magic eating monster that is wearing the exact same face as he is. But fast forwarding to Wayward Son, Simon, Baz, and their best friend Penny go on a vacation to the United States but Simon sort of falls into a bit of a funk. Even though he beat the previous villain in the first novel and he found Baz and they began a relationship, Simon is just finding it hard to live and enjoy his life. Wayward Son was basically more about the relationship between Simon and Baz. And of course there was an underlying story within it because Simon and the gang do get in tons of trouble as they travel across the American West. It was just a novel that just honestly did not sit right with me. I just found it very boring. There were others who were likening Simon's story at first to 
the story of Harry Potter. But personally, I just don't think that it landed within that realm. I gave it three stars on Goodreads. The story of Simon Snow is supposed to be a trilogy, but I just don't think that I'm going to pick it up and read it. The next couple of books I honestly did not enjoy whatsoever. The Children of Blood and Bone series. In past videos, I spoke about these books a little bit and how I at first had DNF'd it, but then I went back and I read the sequel, Children of Virtue and Vengeance. But this story just wasn't it. A lot of what I felt was wrong with this story dealt with a lot of the characterization of the characters. Their personalities irritated me so much. All three of the main protagonists, Zale, Amari, Inan, all got under my skin in such a way that I wanted to throw hands. What are you talking about? My God, pull, pull yourself down. together! Zale and her brother basically go on a mission to bring magic back to her people. They, they start a war against the Orisha kingdom and Amari being the princess to the tyrant king joins their group but the way that they go about it the way that they start this war the way that they continue through the war and the repetitive mistakes that they made over and over and over again I just couldn't deal with it. These books are part of another trilogy and I just don't believe that I'm going to read it. I gave Children and Bone two stars and I gave Virtue and Vengeance three stars only because Tomi Adeyomi's voice to the characters and their personalities felt way more fleshed out than they did in the beginning. I did see bits of growth within all of them, but it just wasn't enough. The next book would have to be Need I Say More? Stephanie. Stephanie! Did we really need a second retelling to the first Twilight book? I just, I just, I think that the only way that I'm ever going to read another Twilight book is if Stephanie actually comes out with probably a continuation to the story. And when I mean continuation, I mean that she can probably go on and talk about the life of Renesmee and Jacob. She left their story open. I just feel that instead of repeating past books, let's just keep pressing forward like we had to do with 2020. This next book I'm only going to talk about briefly, and that book is Ray Bearer by Jordan E. Forco. I know that this book has been getting huge buzz and five-star ratings and reviews on Goodreads and everywhere else, but the reason that it didn't sit with me was because, and again, this is only my personal opinion, there was a section of, and just a small trigger warning, the section that I could not get over was in the very beginning, and it was a small section, but there was a telling of assault upon a character. And the description of it kind of made me feel so uneasy that I closed the book and I gave it away and Yeah, I read other people's reviews upon it and I read the premise of the entirety of the book. It was just that section for me that I absolutely did not like. And when something makes me feel very uneasy like that, I have to walk away for my mental health. Again, other people have been saying that Ray Barra is a fantastic debut and I am in no way trying to bash 
this novel because I do think that Jordan's writing and her talent is really exquisite. It's just that it wasn't for me. And the last book that I'm going to quickly talk about would have to be The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. I listened to this story on audiobook. It is an, an adult romance, but it just wasn't for me. The whole premise of it is two strangers meet in an elevator and Drew, the male protagonist, asks Alexa to be his date to a wedding right then and there. For the wedding, they sort of pretend date just to try to save a bit of face to the wedding company. And of course they began to fall in love, sort of. The entirety of the book gave me like 50 shades of gray feels without all of the extremism and many of the explicit love scenes but it was just more of a novel centered around the two protagonists miscommunicating constantly. <laughs> it was just a love affair that I honestly could not get into. All right, you guys, and that is all the disappointing reads that I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and also please subscribe. And as always, talk to me down in the comments. I enjoy hearing your feedback. What were some of your disappointing reads of this year? I pray that you just continue to take it easy on yourselves as we continue to close out this year. And yeah, <laughs> I hope you guys are well. I will see you in the next one. Bye.